Good morning guys! Welcome to the Bitcoin Family YouTube channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi Taihutu. Yes, I am the guy that three years ago sold literally everything he owned, went all into Bitcoin and started traveling the world with his family in a camper van. We are still all in Bitcoin, still traveling the world, supporting this industry 24-7 as a family. Now coming to you guys from Chalak Lam Beach on Koh Phangan, Thailand. Probably the last two days because tomorrow we start our trip to Europe. In today's video guys, it's packed full with beautiful charts, it's packed full with information why I am so bullish as an investor at the moment. I'm going to show you amazing charts, you need to see these charts guys and then you understand my bullishness. Also showing you how we did the donation yesterday to Happy Food in Thailand. We collected 110,000 baht, that is 3,500 US dollar. That is 0.38 Bitcoin and we handed over the donations yesterday. It was a very cool video about this. Also taking a look at where we could be in this average Roger innovation model where you have the innovators phase that runs all the way up and back down to the laggards phase where are we now with bitcoin very interesting fact and guys i will end the video with amazing news of a company i became ambassador and advisor for yes the company i've been referring to a few more times in the videos finally i'm able to tell you who it is show their office and show you my introduction to becoming their advisor in switzerland while i was walking around here on the beach Enjoy today's video guys! Let's take a jump into my office! Whoa. Yes, small eyes guys, yes, small eyes. Why? Of course, because we are leaving the island the last couple of nights, people have been coming by the house and having some drinks and some fun. So every night I'm going to bed very late and, stand and getting up early in the morning again. I'm getting too old for this shit. That's why my eyes look this small. Yesterday guys was the first time in the last three months I didn't make a video. This didn't feel right. <laughs> I don't know why, but normally just I get up every morning. I make these videos for you guys, but I also make them for myself because I really enjoy it. And yesterday I didn't make one and I didn't go live because the day took me over because a lot of people came by and we had some dinner and you know, we had drinks and all that stuff, but it's still <sighs> mosquitoes, but it still felt really strange. So I don't think I won't be making a video anymore because I just love to make these things. I just want to provide you guys with as much as possible information as I still can. But I also realized yesterday that the next couple of days it will be a little bit difficult because we are starting to travel again. And during the traveling time, I don't think I am able to launch this video exactly on the same time every day. Because we are going to travel from here to Kozumui with the boat then fly from Koh Samui to Bangkok, sleep one night, and then from Bangkok to Dusseldorf, and then Dusseldorf to Venlo. So the next three days I will be traveling a lot, and I don't think I can make the videos every morning on time and edit them so you have them in the morning in Europe with your coffee. And even worse guys, I have some terrible news for the coffee drinkers. When I will go to Europe, then I won't be able to record these videos in the morning, edit them and have them live before 8 o'clock in the morning in European time because that would mean I need to record these videos in the middle of the night around 3, 4 o'clock and then start editing them so that you can have them live at 8 o'clock in the morning. So I just want to warn you that the time of the videos going live on YouTube might be shifting because we are traveling to Europe. I don't know exactly what time I will be posting them um, but you will find out and you will see that it will again become this recurring moment of these videos appearing on YouTube. Yesterday was an amazing day guys because yesterday we were handing over the donations we collected in the last weekend for Happy Food here in Thailand. In total we collected 110,000 Thai baht. That's 3,500 US dollar. That's 0 0.38 Bitcoin. This is what we collected in three days times and we donated it yesterday to Happy Food in Thai Baht Cash. So and converted all these cryptos into Thai Baht. 
and then I gave these Thai baht to the organization. Um, it was a beautiful day. The founder of the organization was there, of course, to uh, receive the donation. He explained to my children and to my wife and to all the other people that were there why he started to build this happy food, uh, why he started to build happy food and to what e happy food is evolving for the next couple of months. And, you know, the money we were able to donate yesterday, 110,000 baht, that's about 6,000 meals. So because of you guys there, because of, so because guys, you are, so because guys, you, you that were so generously donating to the crypto wallets, 6,000 meals can be created for all these people, for all these homeless and jobless people now here on Kopangan. 6,000 meals almost. So this is the power of crypto. This is the power of the community. I really want to thank you at the bottom of my heart because it's, it was really painful for me to see these people standing in these lines and to, to tell my kids what was happening in the world and why these people now were standing in lines for food. They, they, they even couldn't understand it. Everybody should be able to have food. Yes, I told my daughters, but the world is not always equally honest for everybody and that's why we need to help them and that's why we need to lead by example. And I did this again for my kids to see leading by example we pull this wagon we try to get some money in for these people do you know how much children learn from this just because you as a parent because i as a parent you just do it and you lead by example they learn everything they will copy and paste this in their life this is what i think is really important but again guys it was not only my effort most of the donations the biggest part was done by you guys 3,500 US dollar, 6,000 meals were just given to Happy Food because of you. Thank you so much for supporting all these people here in Kopangan. They will keep me up to date with videos, what they are going to do with the money. So every time they're going to spend, they will make videos and they will send them to me so I can show you again how this is affecting all these lives of the people now in the coming weeks and months. Something very funny, in the evening uh, some friends came over of course and we had some drinks and of course there was one Dutch couple, Lex and A, met Lex and A two years ago on this island and we became very good friends. Lex is a real Dutchie and is always there to help people and A is the same. Today again they come by and they want to cook my last dinner. A is an amazing cook, they are going to cook lobster today, this is amazing. Um, Lex and A, thank you from the bottom of the heart. For all the support you have given me and my family here on the island again, I, like Lex and I are almost the same age, he's a little bit older, uh, but we, we all went through this hakke period in the Netherlands. This was in the 90s when this strange style of music came up, this upbeat tempo music, which later evolved into hardcore music, but it started with hakke in the Netherlands. And to dance this hacker style is not easy. So Lex was always saying, oh, home man, my wife, do it, do it, you can do it. I put some hacker music on it, it was like, like this. And my wife started to dance hacker style and everybody was laughing and enjoying it. Lex tried to do hacker as well because he's bold. And in the 90s, all these hacker guys, all these ravers, we call them, they were all shaved heads and they all had Australian suits and Nike airs. My niece Selma, if you're watching this Selma, she was a real hardcore hacker. She still is a real hardcore one. She's going to all these parties still. But this dance style was different than all the dance styles we have seen before. So I'm going to share with you how hacker looks when we drink a little bit and how my wife then starts to hack it <laughs> with legs it was a lot of fun yesterday <laughs> it, and, uh, and we really enjoyed it and we uh, we tested my audio system one more time here in Copagan full power music enjoy this uh, hack it style dancing now <laughs> Hey, did you enjoy my wife dancing? Oh, she always loves to dance. Um, guys, let's get serious. <laughs> let's get to the Bitcoin price because you all want to know what the fuck is happening to Bitcoin. Is, is, is Bitcoin becoming like a 9K price forever? Is it never going to move anymore? Of course, Bitcoin is going to move. We are going to go up 
or down we don't know both options are possible but guys let's look at the charts and see what they tell us let's take the first chart Bam, this one this is a one day chart on this one day chart you can see we had this huge uptrend we break down from this huge uptrend and now we form this new channel this small channel that goes downwards the top of this channel is around 9350 i think the midline is around 8900 and the bottom is around 8300 we are about to break the top of the channel if we can break this top of this downward channel so 9350 this is very positive this means we can start to form a new upward channel which can bring us then to around 10,500 this huge resistance level we have been finding the last year and if we can break this 10,500 we can take it all the way up to 11,600 or even 13,600 I will show you with another chart in a minute why I think these levels but there was a guy in the comments that was Didi you're too bullish I like what you're creating but you're always bullish so for these people that think I'm always bullish, this is because I'm looking at the market as an investor and not as a day trader. And you might think, now, oh, what's the difference? To tell you the difference, if you look at the market as an investor, you zoom out to the market. So you look in the longer term. If you look to the market as a day trader, you zoom in to the market and you look to your profits that you can make daily or hourly or minutely. So I look as an investor. So for as an investor in the longer term, I cannot be bearish. At the moment, I can only be bullish because the long-term investment signals are all flashing. It's like these alarm bells. Woo, woo, woo. We are going up in the next couple of one and a half, two years. So this is why I am bullish. I agree with all the short-term investing people that we could go down to 8,300 to the bottom of this channel and if we break downwards from the channel yes we can even go to 7,000 US dollar in the short term if you are in it for the short term and if you are trading daily okay I agree you can be bearish sometimes but if you are in this industry as an investor like me for the long term this is not a moment to be bearish this is a moment to be bullish because all the long-term macro signals are flashing. They are all showing us that we will see a bull run in the next one and a half, two years. I don't want to stress about the day charts every day. I don't have time for it because I'm making these videos for you guys and doing a shitload of other work of which one new job I will tell you at the end of the video. By the way, can you give the video already a thumbs up? Share it with your community subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell before you leave after the price at TA. So please do it now. Thumbs up. Yep. Click it. Thank you. That is the reason why I am bullish because I look at the market as an investor and not as a day trader. Let's take another chart. Let's take this chart. Pam. This one, yes, this is a weekly chart. So we are slowly zooming out from daily now to weekly. And this weekly chart created by Keith Waring, a good friend of mine in Spain. I will visit you, Keith, because I know you're going to travel with a camper van as well in Europe. We will meet for a beer somewhere. This beautiful chart made by him, you can see the Fibonacci retracement from the 20K level 2017 to all the bottom in 2019, around 3K. And he drew the Fibonacci retracement. And then you can see we are hovering around this 0.382 Fibonacci retracement level around 9,250 US dollar. We have been hovering around this level, going below it and above it and below it and above it. But we have been hovering around this level now for uh, several months. So this is the level we need to abandon. So we are going to abandon this level or upwards or downwards. If we look to the next level in this Fibonacci retracement tool, which is a very reliable tool, you can see that the 0.5 level is around 11,500. So if we would break this level of 0.382, we would take it up to the next level of 0.5 Fibonacci retracement, which is around 11,500. Uh, and if we can break that level, we can even take it all the way up to the 0.16 level of Fibonacci retracement, which is around 13,500. So that is why I use these two's number in, the, in my analyst just a few minutes before so we could go to 11,500, 13,500. And if the FOMO even kicks in at that moment, 16K is not even that difficult to reach. 
if we might break the current level downwards, the next level of Fibonacci retracement support is around 0.23 Fibonacci retracement level. The price on the 0.23 level is 7,000 US dollar for one Bitcoin around 7,075 US dollar per one Bitcoin. So this is the next level of support if we would break downwards. For all the bear people that still wanna buy Bitcoin cheaper, yes, put in your buy orders around that 7,000 level. In my opinion, these buy orders, they won't be filled because if we look at this chart, this chart, you can see that there is a lot of buy orders around 8,900 and 8,300 levels. Around these levels, if Bitcoin would retrace to 8,900, 8,300, millions of dollars are going to flow into the market and buy Bitcoins. So that will keep Bitcoin from falling below the 8,300 level. But on the same chart, you can also see the selling pressure. Because if you look at the chart, you can see this huge red area. This is the selling pressure. There's a lot of sell orders around 9,500 US dollar worth of Bitcoin. So we need to buy up all these Bitcoins around 9,500 to take the Bitcoin price higher than this level. Because there is a lot of sell orders, you can see this on the chart, it will be difficult to break this level. And if we break the 9,500 level, then again, it will be become very difficult to break this multi-year resistance of 10,500 US dollar. This is how you look at the charts, in my opinion. Another way to look at charts is to look where we are as a community in Bitcoin. There is a model called Everest Innovation Model where you can see which stages a technology innovative product is going through. You can see that you have the innovators, then you can see you have the early adapters, then you get the early majority, then you get the large majority, and then you get the laggards. They will step into the industry at the last moment. If we look at the percentages assigned to these stages, you can see that 2.5% will enter in the innovator stage, 13.5% of the world will enter um, in the early adapter phase, and the biggest number of 34% will enter in the early majority phase. The next 34% will enter in the late majority phase, and the last 16% of the people will enter this market in the laggards phase. This is how you look at the technical growth curve of products, the adoption curve of products. Um, for example, Apple went through this curve as well. So, so first 2.5% started to use Apple products like the iPhone, then another 13.5% started to use the iPhone, then the 34% started to use the iPhone, and another 34 and at the end, the last couple of people, the last 16% will enter and start to use the iPhone. So this is how you look at the markets in a macro perspective. The question now is where are we with Bitcoin? Last week already I made a video where I stated that in the UK around 4%, 3.85% owns Bitcoin at the moment. In the United States of America there was a research that stated that there was 11, later corrected to 9%, 9% of the people owning Bitcoin. Um, so if you take an average around the world, I think we would be between 3 and 5, 3 and 6% of the world, I think now is owning Bitcoin. This means that if now 6% of the world huddles Bitcoin, this would mean we would be in the early adapter phase of the cycle, the phase where 13.5% of the world steps into this industry. So we would be on the health of this phase of the early adapter phase. If you look at this curve, you can see that this is exactly the moment to be investing in Bitcoin because from here, it will only go up, 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 up for a couple of years before it will curve down again. So I think with Bitcoin, 5% of the world, 6% of the world owning Bitcoin, we are now in the early adapter phase around the half of this one. It has been proven in history that the time to invest in new kind of technologies is in these innovator early adapter phases because then you will make the biggest return of investment. Bitcoin is still in this curve in the beginning, so it's an amazing time if you look at it as a long-term market to step in now. Something else that is very positive, if you look at this tweet from Plan B, you can see that 13,800 people responded to the tweet. He did a poll where he asked, what are you guys doing with Bitcoin? 65% is holding their Bitcoins. 18.3% is now buying Bitcoin, so topping up their Bitcoin wallet or buying the first Bitcoins, of course. Only 3.9% of the people are selling their Bitcoins and around 12.2% has no position in Bitcoin. So it's sitting out, probably is hatched into stable currencies and waiting for Bitcoin to dip to this 8,000 level to buy and to get into Bitcoin. I have another amazing chart, this one. 
this chart you can see again we talked already about this this chart is showing you the hash ribbon signal the hash ribbon signal already flashed before the halving and the hash rib ribbon signal has only flashed a few times before and this signal is always flashing when we see a huge run we saw the signal flashing this year when we made a run all the way up to above 10,000 US dollar. We saw the signal flashing last year, 2019, when we were around 3,000 US dollar and we took it all the way up to 14,000 US dollar. The time before that was in 2016 when the signal flashed and we took the Bitcoin all the way up to 20,000 US dollar. It has flashed a few times before as well and every time we saw a run up. Now, yesterday, the signal flashed again the first time after the halving. If you look to the left on the chart, to the history you can see the last time this signal flashed just after the halving was in 2016 and what did we see in 2016 when the signal flashed after the halving we saw this huge run up 2000 percent run up all the way up to 20,000 US dollar Bitcoin so now the signal flashed again after the halving very positive bullish signal very reliable signal as you can see on the charts the charts don't lie the numbers don't lie this can be a very important moment for bitcoin because it flashed after the halving which could indicate that we are up for a huge bull run also when you look at this chart bam yes beautiful chart again this chart shows you two reasons why we could see a bull run as well i am showing you all these charts so that all these people that are now telling me, Didi, you're too bullish, you're too bullish. I'm telling them why I am bullish. I'm telling you why I am bullish in the long term perspective. This chart shows you two things. One, if you look to the left, you can see in the history there was this macro trend line coming downwards from the top, from the all time high at that moment. And then you can see the moment Bitcoin breaks this downward trend line, that is the moment the bull run, the next bull run starts. Now, if you look to the current situation, you can see again this huge macro trend line. On the other charts, I already shared this with you many more times. It's the thick red line I'm always showing you, long-term trend line above it. This trend line forming from 20,000 US dollar all-time high, now downwards to $10,000. If we can break this line, we can expect the same to happen as we did in the last two times we broke this line we can see this bull run again. Also very positive, a beautiful chart to see. And of course, what happened in the past is no guarantee for the future, but it makes me very bullish because I think because of the stock to flow model Bitcoin has, because of the scarcity Bitcoin has, because of all these fundamentals behind Bitcoin, I think we will increase in value again. And I think we will break this line and go into this new bull run again. And the cool thing to see on this chart is that um, the moment we break this line is always after the halving. So yes, we try it at the moment of the halving, but we haven't succeeded yet at the exact moment of the halving. You can see on the halving, on the vertical line of the halving, we try to break this line, but we never succeed. We go down again and then we break the line. We are doing exactly the same. We try to break it on the moment of the halving. We didn't break it. We went down a little bit and we are going to try and break this one again, retest it again and then break it. And then bam, we will all fly together to the moon. And then the last thing I'm going to share with you guys because the video is already becoming too long again. Yes, yesterday officially was announced in Switzerland, in Souk, in their office, that I became part of the Machina Trader team. But I couldn't say the name yet. Now I can say the name. The project is called Machina Trader. I became the company's ambassador and advisor. And I will show you in the next couple of months what this project has already built and what they are going to contribute to this huge industry of trading. In my opinion, if you look at the technology that Machina Trader has created, this technology will change the whole bot trading industry, not only in crypto, also also in the traditional markets the stock markets and any other market because what they built i saw it once and i tested it twice it is just amazing this is a tool that every trader in the near future wants to use i'm very proud that i became part of this team and i will show you now this video where they yesterday in their new office presented me as their advisor. I was not there because I was in Thailand. I will go there soon because I want to visit and meet the whole team of Machina Trader and have some chats with them. I will give you way more information in the future, but I will leave you now with the video on how they presented me as their advisor. 
in Switzerland, guys. Good day, Basel. For the ones that don't know me, my name is Didi Taihutu. I want to tell you the story how I got involved into Machina Trader. Once upon a time, I was in Took Crypto Valley at CD Labs, and there the beautiful guy comes walking up to me, Jerry. He says, Didi, my name is Jerry. I love what you are doing as a family. I want to talk to you about my project. I started to look at it, I started to test it, I started to educate myself a little bit more. This project, in my opinion, is going to be one of the big projects next couple of years. That was everything for today. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you did enjoy the video and my small eyes, give it a thumbs up, share it with your community, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell and please leave a comment as I love to answer your comments. Yesterday we had again more than 300 thumbs up. I want to have more and see more than 300 thumbs up today again because that's exactly what the YouTube algorithm also wants to see and which will make our channel grow. That will lead into more monetization of our channel and more monetization of my channel will lead to more donations to poor people because remember we are giving away the revenues of our youtube channel to all these poor people ngos and all these charity organizations we meet during our travels please remember to zoom out in crypto and to zoom in in life enjoy every single minute of the day because that is exactly what makes life worth living thank you for watching and hopefully see you tomorrow again bye